Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Arcane Artist. I'm Luke. I'm The Arcane Artist. I have a confession to make. I messed up. It's okay, we all do sometimes. But this was a pretty big one to me. It cost me about $20 worth of supplies. Not that big of a deal to me. I got 20 bucks. But the time. Two weeks of working on it. For it to end up in the trash. That one bothers me. So, I decided to maybe do a... Quicker episode, at least quicker for me to start to finish a sculptural episode, which will be tied into the next episode that will come out sooner or later. Hopefully sooner. But because I have to postpone that episode, this episode is going to have to cut back on some of the excess animation and goofy gags and stuff like that that I... What the way you creepy? Can I help you with something? Can I? Show you out so that you can be far, far away from me. Uh, I am the real boy. Boy Bibles. Boy, boy bubbles. Bubbles. Hmm. Let's start the project. Okay, so our base will be a ball of tin foil. Just crumple it up, get it nice and tight. I like to smack it with something to try to flatten out some of the creases. But you want to leave some creases so the uh, Sculpey has something to stick to. Also, tin foil is great because Sculpey needs to be baked, and having metal on the inside just speeds up the process. Okay, we're gonna make some deep holes here for the eyes. Watch your fingers, don't jab yourself. I wanna make sure it's good and deep so that I can have some sunken eyes for this character. Which we'll be getting to in a little while here. Okay, so this is your original Sculpey. It comes in a variety of flesh tones, but I tend to go with this one so I can tone it myself and I'll show you how. Uh, also make sure your work surface is clean because if there's any paint or sawdust or residue on your work surface, it's going to get into the Sculpey and it will be there forever. So make sure it's good and clean. I use a little isopropyl alcohol. We're just splitting the Sculpey up into some different sized chunks here so that we can have some variance in skin tone. So here's my secret weapon, flocking. Flocking is basically fabric powder. It's kind of like if you took a piece of felt and shaved it with a razor or something. So to get some different skin tones here, we're going to have like a flushed tone, like this one, which is red and purple, mostly red, a little bit of purple, and just mix that in, knead it around. You're going to get pockets, and uh, probably some of the flocking will fall out, so just use the Sculpey to dab it back up. It'll get in there sooner or later. 
Just keep working at it. I'm basically trying to mimic my own pasty skin color here, so... Eh, looks like it's getting pretty close. Yep, yeah, pretty close. Alright, now this is a more purple skin tone we're going to be using for like around the eyes and things like that. Where the skin is very close to the bone. And just repeat the process. Dab it up. Knead it up, fold it around. Here's the red. Here's the more purple. And then I did a kind of white one. That's your normal one. Alright, so for an older character, I'm going to start with just the plain Sculpey. I'm just trying to make sure it's a little uniform here, and I'm also watching out for animal hairs and lint and things like that because we have two pets here, so don't want to bake that into my character. So you can see the translucency. It's very nice. So just mush that in. I start in the eye sockets. Just mash it around there. Sculpey's kind of strange. It's not like a Chavant clay or a wax-based clay. It's definitely not like earth clay in any way, which those types of clays are more manipulated by actually carving away at it. This is more the kind of thing that you have to push around. And the back here, we're not going to worry about too much. Just make sure it's enclosed because if you leave the back just tin foil, I worry about it chipping and things like that, it coming loose. I don't want that to happen, so go ahead and cover it up. Give it a little roll, make sure it's all sealed. Okay, and I'm just going to add a quick neck here. We're not doing, we're just blocking in the forms right now, we're not getting too finicky. So, I'm thinking about places where blood would flow. On a face, on a human face. An older character, their noses tend to be kind of red. So we take the red Sculpey that we made earlier and just kind of block in a nose. Also, you have to think about if you were doing a younger character, you would make their cheeks rosy, but with a older character, their skin has begun to sag, so their cheeks would tend to be kind of bony and white, and the skin underneath it would be kind of red. So I'm going with kind of flushed color for the lips and mouth, chin area. And I want this character to be toothless, so I'm doing kind of a jutting jaw. See how I'm not really carving away at it? I'm more pushing it around with this silicone probe tool. And this is one of my favorite tools for Sculpey. It's a crease tool. Adding some wrinkles to the neck. And now we're going to start with the eyes and the eye bags, which I'm using that uh, more purpley one that we made earlier. I want them to be kind of sunken, yet kind of puffy at the same time. That's kind of a hard... Uh, kind of a hard thing to achieve. Ah, uh, here I'm using um, wooden beads for eyes. I do this because uh, sometimes I like to adjust the eyes later on, and it's just easy to stick a probe into the hole of the bead and move the eye around to get them to look where you want them to look. And 
Also, I'm going for one of the eyes to be a little more bulgy than the other one. Sometimes I use different size beads, just slightly. I like these beads that come in bags because they're never like a uniform size. So you can get some fun effects out of it that way. And already it's starting to come to life. You just add the eyes, boom. Also, when doing anything in this sculpting process, it's just, you know, you see something that needs done, do it. Like, I'm always going around adjusting certain things, adding wrinkles, and when you're moving the head around like this all the time, a lot of the time you're going to smush things on accident. So, just, uh, Keep adjusting, keep adjusting. Working on the eyes some more here. And they weren't quite as sunken as I wanted. Plus the head shape was just a little odd, so I'm adding in a brow ridge here. Just some of the normal Sculpey. I think I add, yeah, I add a little white to that too later, and it didn't quite turn out the way that I wanted it, so I just left it, and also, um, yeah, just to get a little more blood flow looking effect here, I added some red to the forehead. Maybe she's a little sunburnt. Maybe she's a little angry and her face is flushed. And again, see how I'm just kind of pushing it around and mushing it in. And I've found you don't have to really worry about scoring and gluing down with like, there's a Sculpey, like a liquid Sculpey medium you can buy to, it's kind of like a Sculpey glue. I've never used it, I've never seen a need for it, as long as you make sure it's flat against the surface and all sides or uh, areas are touching and are mashed down good enough, then it seems to stick just fine, at least in my experience. There's the white that I added, I wanted it to be a little more bony on that eyebrow didn't quite turn out the way I wanted, it was a little more stark of a transition than I had uh, intended, but I left it, and skin variation is always good, so it still seemed to work. Uh, I do have some pure white Sculpey here. I decided to make this more bulging eye a blind eye. Making sure it's not too rough. Again, adjustments, adjustments everywhere. These ball styluses are the best for just adding divots, things like that. Also, it's good to make sure you have some flat planes on the face. Oh, I'm using a very small ball stylus here for pock marks in the nose and pores. Scars. Really, these silicone tools that have a ball stylus on one end and these kind of poking, creasing, and like line silicone tips at the other end are my favorite for this. And I do believe it's ear time. 
as you probably know, um, two things on a human head that continue to grow your whole life are your ears and your nose. So, if this is a ancient hag, it would stand to reason that her ears would be pretty huge. So, maybe she's a couple hundred years old. She needs to have big, crazy ears. Don't be afraid of reference. Um, ears come in many different shapes and they don't have to be symmetrical either your left ear and your right ear don't have to look the same because if they did then there would be a problem with my head for sure I have two totally different ears kind of the fun thing about ears is you sculpt them pristinely and then you just kind of mash them a little bit and they look just that much more real make sure that you seal up the back side too you don't want these to pop off after everything's baked Uh, the, uh, the other ear, I didn't show the sculpting of that, but I made it a cropped ear, which is, uh, something they used to do back in the day, way back in the day, where, uh, repeat offenders, lawbreakers, sometimes they would cut a big chunk of their ear off so that you could spot them more easily. Here we got, um... I took some more brown flocking, added that in, and now we're doing some melanoma, liver spots, moles. Ooh, man, I'd have that checked out. Ay, ay, ay. That looks like a problem. For randomness, I just kind of make these little clumps and drop them on there and wherever they land I just stick them down I feel the need to say that you shouldn't go overboard with this but I don't know if you really can go overboard with this it's uh oh yeah this one I added a little white first and then put a thin layer of the flesh tone over it which just gives it even more of a kind of crazy, like, something's growing there. You need to get that checked out. So much fun. Ah, yes, let's add a little more blue. Lighter skin tones like this have a lot more blue in it than people realize. Um, of course we have plenty of blue in our skin because we're not orange. We're not just yellow and red. There's got to be some blue in there. And if you look at like the palm of your hand or closely in the mirror at your cheeks there's all kinds of little capillaries and skin tone variants veins you can add some green got some skin tags going on here ooh that now that looks like a problem that needs to be checked out right now. Go to your dermatologist. Or just, you know, mix up a remedy at home. 
little witch hazel. Still just adjusting, adjusting, adjusting. I never stop adjusting until it's baked. <laughs> Basically, I try to just keep on going, adjusting, adding just tiny details. And using different tools is another uh, crucial part of it. If you use the same width of tool, see I have a little wire rake here just to add even tinier pockmarks. If you use the same size tool everywhere, it's going to look like, it's kind of like if you were to paint a picture with one size brush, you have little variant in it, and the eye can tell, you can tell by looking at it, just lightly dragging this uh, silicone tool, just to add some tiny lines and wrinkles and folds. I decided that this should be a mounted head because <laughs> I didn't want to work on the back of the head, not at this point. So I took some just plain white Sculpey and I knew I wanted one of the uh, most important things would be for it to be a completely different texture than the head here. I wanted it to be obvious that it wasn't flesh. <laughs> So that's why we're using the white Sculpey, and I'm just using literally the handles of other tools, wood tools. This is the back of a brush. Uh, I'm trying to get it to look like uh, maybe they used like a, a scoop chisel to hack out a piece of wood here. And one other thing to kind of watch out for is if you are using actual wood tools on this. I try not to use the same side every time because then it'll look like you just kind of went around with a stamp. Just stamped these textures in. Uh, and even here I'm using a brush just to soften up some areas. Add some dents, add some cracks. Wire uh, rake again to add some fine cracks. Grab yourself a baking pan and put the tin foil with your pieces on top very very gingerly and throw it in the oven this went in the oven for 20 minutes at 275 degrees and came out perfect no burns nothing so now I didn't want to paint this it seems like a waste to be going in and painting something that has such a great skin texture and translucency to it. But I didn't say we weren't going to stain it a little bit. I'm using isopropyl alcohol and just some watercolors, cheap watercolors mixed together. A little bit of red and a little bit of purple, some brown, some blue and just going around and getting into the creases of the sculpture and this is where it really comes to life. Um, the isopropyl dries really quickly and also it has a tendency to seep into cracks a lot faster and more efficiently than water would. So I'm just going around the eyes and all the little nooks and crannies And sneak up on this one too. Don't go in there too heavy handed. Um, you can always add more. And with this, after it is baked, you can take away, but it is hard. You just have to really saturate it with some isopropyl and then try to dab it off. But yes, look at this. This is coming to life so quickly now. You can also add just some more transition in between the skin tones of the Sculpey that we actually mixed up. 
And when you weren't looking, I uh, added a little high gloss fingernail top coat to the eyes and nose and high points. That's uh, That was all your fault for not looking. It had nothing to do with me hitting the wrong button on my recording device. Now we're uh, going to add some scraggly, gross old hag hair. So since her head's all crusty and disgusting anyway, I'm using a little bit of cyanoacrylate glue, super glue, and just putting it on with a toothpick and just sticking the hair on, and then lightly pulling it away, leaving behind what's going to be her scraggly hair. Leave it there for a second, and then just kind of lightly tug it off. And I just kind of repeat that process. Sometimes I grab little clumps like that, stick it down. If the hairs stick to the toothpick, then I kind of drag them around until they just decide to stop sticking. <laughs> and then you have hair in a new area. It's a pretty fast and loose way of adding hair to something, but for this application it really does work, and it looks pretty believable. I was having a little trouble with this clump of hair getting it to stick down, but eventually I got it. And I always go around reinforcing with some more super glue. And now we're just going to paint up the base a little bit. Again, I want this to be starkly different than the head itself so that it does not uh, get washed out. Thank you for watching this episode. I love how this turned out. I had so much fun with this, I'm glad that I didn't do the episode that I was planning on doing because of complications of accuracy. The episode that I originally intended on doing actually uses a lot of the same techniques, tools, and materials as this one. So this one is kind of an introduction. I love this old hag. And yes, I know she looks pretty alive to be taxidermy. They didn't have taxidermy like this back in the Middle Ages. Most of the time it was just bones or furs or antlers. But I think of it as almost, it's a hero's trophy that's enchanted. He utters a few magic words and she springs to life to offer some insight on some problem if he can trust what she says. So maybe in the future we'll do a version of a hag's head that is accurate to the Middle Ages. It'd probably be on a pike. Is there anything that I'd do differently if I were to do this again? Which I will. Um, I might focus a little bit more on the actual mount the next time. It'd be cool to put some gold leaf or some filigree or some extra stones in there. The earrings are actual stones that I put in. But other than that, I think everything went according to plan perfectly. I really do love this thing, but I'm not one of those artists who holds on to all of his own art. I would love even more to give this out to one of you, but I need your help. To start giving away things to different subscribers, we need to hit a high amount of subscribers. So I need you to like, subscribe, share, 
Tell everybody you know. Anybody out there who likes weird, interesting artwork, let them know about me. And click the bell. And always, keep making weird shit.